Alexander from Diamond Arm. First off, read this disclaimer carefully. We will look at a very, very interesting company in a very interesting uh, space, and that is what I call external bionics. If we see, uh, look at you know this uh, theme, which contains multiple stocks. The average performance is uh, certainly outperforming here the S&P 500. Though they are significantly away from the 52-week highs, there is multiple multiple reasons for that, and we will look at a very specific company in this space, and that is Exobionics. Uh, this is a very very interesting uh, theme because you know this is the future uh, Bionics. Um, the problem, of course, is that this is still early, meaning there will be volatility. But the biggest gains will come from getting in early. That's the thing. Uh, so if you are investing in the Bionics in the year 2030, sure, that will be an okay time to get into Bionics. It will be a huge theme by then, but then you are very late to the party. Okay, so this is one of the most established players in this space. The leader in exoskeleton technology. Over the past 15 years, we've continued to drive our expertise in creating a variable technology to augment human potential. Okay, help your patients regain mobility with exohealth. So here you can see how it works. Every year, 56 million people suffer from acquired brain injury, 15 million suffer from stroke, and between 250,000 and 500,000 people suffer from SCI. Many of these people are left with limited mobility. At Exobionics, we decided to tackle this clinical opportunity using our unique blend of clinical and engineering expertise to develop disruptive clinical robotics for rehabilitation. Is this the future or will this go away? Of course, this is the future. Are these um, devices currently quite expensive? They are. But, I mean, that's the thing about investing. Ask yourself, is this the future or will this just uh, go, uh, go by the... go away? This is the future. But it gets better. They also have this thing called ExoWorks. ExoWorks combines strength with safety, reducing fatigue and injury. Shoulder injuries caused by over overhead work, repetitive tasks and overexertion is the leading cause of lost health, lost work days due to workplace injuries. Exobionics is striving to alleviate the burden on hardworking people, drastically reducing the number of workplace injuries and cutting down on worker fatigue. So here you can see a worker who is wearing an Exobionics exoskeleton, which enable, which makes him much, much stronger. And they have a partnership with Ford uh, and other businesses, and this is used in the real world. Ask yourself the question, if you look at the future, 2030, 2040, so on, is this how the workplace is going to look like? I think so. Exoskeletons are the future. Okay, let's look at the seasonality of Exo. Okay, so you can see here that um, it's, it's a bit of a mixed bag for sure. Uh, you can see that August and September are mediocre months, usually there is a loss. But October usually sees around a 9% gain and 23% in November. But you can see that even in October, the stocks, uh, so 33% so of the time, EXO closed higher than it opened. Okay, let's look at it against the S&P 500, the main benchmark, like that. So you can see that um, this is a weak period. Um, but it gets stronger heading into October and November, though December is a particularly weak uh, month. Okay. Okay, let's now look at the charts. Exobionics Holdings, it's on the Nasdaq, EKSO is the ticker. Um, we are using weekly data points, um, and we look all the way back here to 2015-ish. Obviously, we do have a downtrend. Um, uh, and this is one of the challenges, one of the major challenges with any highly disruptive business is that this is early. This is very early in the bionics uh, industry. They are trying things out. 
but if you look long term, I find it very hard to become bearish. Having said that, you always want to let the trend be your friend. So even if you do put on a bullish position, exobionics, you should have a clear criteria of when you get out. And when you get out of exobionics, you want to sit on the sidelines and wait for time to like re-entry. If you are in a bullish on the theme, so. But when there are rallies, they are big. This rally here looks a bit like eh, but it's big. This is like 334%. Okay, that's good. Um, this rally here looks a bit mediocre, but let's measure all of a sudden we have 90% Okay, so there are definitively bullish opportunities during this downtrend What I find particularly interesting is that This looks Like a rounding bottom in development This is interesting um the key thing about a rounding bottom, and one of the paradoxes of a rounding bottom, is that they will be most beneficial for a bull that is getting into it a bit early. If you are waiting for a rounding bottom to be like this, so basically you're getting in on the top end of the rounding bottom, then you kind of have missed it. So it's the paradox is that we do not have a fully formed rounding bottom here, but it looks like something that could be a rounding bottom. If we measure from the recent low, like from uh, here to this high, uh, all of a sudden we have 320-ish percent gain, that's good. To the current level we have 110 percent, that's pretty good. That's outperformance, certainly is outperformance. Um, and th th so, I mean, this is interesting, I mean, it just is. Um, the RSI is in the neutral zone. We do have a very... I do, I do like what I see here with the accumulation distribution line. Look look at how it just down here. A very limited volume. And then what happened here? Is this a big, big, big whale? A hedge fund? Who knows? Someone made a big, big move. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. I have no idea what's happened, but something happened. There is a minus 50-ish percent negative correlation with S&P 500. Here you can see the daily data points. I mean, this is just a um, very interesting spike here in volume. Of course, some of this is like uh, probably some short covering as well. But it goes to show you that you definitely want to be very careful about being short XO. Even though it's been in a downtrend. Because let's say that you are short and then it's like, boom, 243% against you. That's tough. We have definitively seen a bit of a pullback after this ma massive move, but the fact of the matter is that this move happened. That's a reality. There is a pullback, but we do also have the surrounding bottom formation, so there's like... Obviously, this is not like a screaming buy, but then again, there is something afoot. What I find especially interesting to look at going forward is this blue 100-day moving average. You see, if we do find support there, it would be a very interesting opportunity to get in. I do find it a bit unfortunate that we did slip below the 200 day moving average in red, but then again, we do. if we have been so long under it, that that's not like a super shocker, but we do want to find some support here uh, soon, which, which would be a sign to get in. Yeah. Okay, let's look at some other additional data. Um, there are no options available. That's because it is not very liquid. Uh, it is shortable, but at these levels, I wouldn't want to be short something like this. I also like the long-term prospects for this theme. If you go to sax.com, they have a number of three hold on XO, F value score, D growth, and D momentum. So definitively not value, value stock. But when it comes to these heavy R&D. Um, Companies, there usually it usually has a negative effect on value. The market cap is only 44 million US dollars. This is definitively a small cap. But yeah, looking long term, I have a very hard time to be to become bearish on on external bionics exoskeletons. It is the future, but definitively there will be volatility. And don't fight the trend, and may the trend be with you.